Good morning. Welcome to worship on Sunday, the 1st of November. My name is the Reverend Paul Lavender. I'm the senior pastor at Mount Pleasant. Today is a day in the Christian calendar called All Saints Day. We know often the day before uh, Halloween, uh, but today is a day when we give thanks to God for those Christian brothers and sisters who've influenced our lives in the past. Some of them uh, we know personally, some we may only know by reputation. But today is an opportunity for us to remind ourselves and to give thanks to God for those who've taught us the faith, those who've influenced us, and those who have reminded us of the love of God in Jesus Christ. It's not just a day about thinking about those who've died, though certainly an act of remembrance is not insignificant or inappropriate. But we give thanks to God for that glorious company of good and godly people who've touched our lives. And so as we come to worship today, we're going to thank God that we're part of his family and we're going to remember people who have influenced us and taught us the faith and encourage us to keep on keeping on. You know, somebody once said to me that a day like today reminds us that even though we may think sometimes we're crazy, we're not alone. So let's bow our heads, shall we, and let's pray together. How shining and splendid are your gifts, O Lord, which you give to us for our eternal well-being. Your glory shines radiantly, O God. And today we thank you for your everlasting grace, for your goodness, and pray that you will help us as we seek to strive on towards the calling that you've placed on our lives. Bless us, we ask, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's share together in saying the Lord's Prayer in whatever language or form is common for you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
So let's pray together. Let's all pray. Lord God, thank you that you are our protector, that you're our complete saviour. Thank you that you're our ever-present help in time of need. Thank you for the love that you have for us in the mighty acts of Jesus Christ, which we see and understand as being so wonderfully for us. And even when we're harassed and overwhelmed, when we feel that our path is full of thorns and briars, and when we have to walk on in blindness, as it were, and perhaps we feel that we've only got bare feet, help us to know your comfort and that if we have pain, you share it. Thank you that you share the path of life with us, even when it's difficult. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you that you're there for us in all situations. Thank you that with you we are safe ultimately. And any wounds we may feel here on earth are only temporary. So we pray for your comfort, we pray for your strength. And we pray for the awareness of the Holy Spirit, our comforter and our guide. And we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Oh yes. Good morning, everybody. It's time for our intercessionary prayer time. And we're going to come before God and talk to him about, amongst other things, the COVID-19 situation. 
So let's bow our heads, let's worship the Lord. Father, we come to you. We come to you, Lord, because we have been invited into your presence. We come to you, Lord, with knowing that we've been forgiven and cleansed of our sin. We know that we stand before a righteous God and that, Lord, we're clothed in the righteousness of Christ. And God, we want to come before you with clean hands and a pure heart. And so God, we confess before you our sin, all those things, Lord, which we have done, we should not have done, unworthy of you. And we confess the things that we should have done that we did not do. And so Lord, we thank you that you are a forgiving God. You've promised to forgive and cleanse us from our sin. And so God, we come to you and we make our request known to you, knowing that you are mighty God who loves us. God, we know that you love the world for God so loved the world. We know Lord that when you created the world, you saw it was good. And God, we as a world are suffering. We're suffering, God, from many, many things, but one of the things is the pandemic. And Lord, it seems as though it's biting again. Lord, we bring to you the severity of the situation, the fear that accompanies it, the, Lord, the intensity of it, Lord, the strangeness of life under its uh, seeming power. And Lord, we say, God is in control. And we know, Lord, you are in control. But we ask you, Lord, to extend your mercy to us. And we remember, God, you say that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then from heaven you will hear and you will heal the land. And so, God, I pray this morning that you will heal the land, that uh, your people will. Lord, humble ourselves and pray, and that your people will seek your face so that from heaven you will hear us. And Lord, we pray that you will extend your mercy to us and heal our land. God, we think of many times in the past where things have been pretty tough where plagues and pestilences have assaulted us. And we remember, Lord, the many, many occasions that inoculations and vaccines have been discovered when new ways of treatment that we take for granted now have been discovered. And we pray, Lord, that as scientists work on this, as they pitch their minds to it, Lord, that you will give them insights that will surprise them. Lord, that you will plant ideas into their mind. Lord, that any tests they carried out will be true. Lord, that the pressure that they're under to come up with a vaccine very swiftly, Lord, will not mask things that they need to see. And so God, we just thank you for these Lord, research people who have spent so much time and effort and energy and passion and uh, on the vaccines and the treatments. And we pray, God, that you will be, again, very gracious and merciful to us. Give them success. Lord, we need you in this. And we thank you, God, that you care about us you know 
our fears. You know, the panic that comes to people sometimes, the depression that comes. And so, Lord, deliver us. And we ask it, God, in your name, out of our need. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. This morning's reading is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been known. But we will know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Thanks be to God. Blessed are the humble in spirit For theirs is the kingdom of heaven And blessed are the mourners they will find The lowly they shall reign on the earth. Oh, how you bless us, Lord, blessing upon blessing, Lord, making us a blessing, a blessing for the world. Oh, how you bless us, Lord, blessing upon blessing, Lord. A blessing for the world And blessed are those who hunger Who thirst for justice For surely you'll fill them completely Who show mercy will be shown mercy and blessed are the pure hearts they'll see God they'll see God oh how you bless us Lord blessing upon blessing Lord a blessing, a blessing for the world. Oh, how you bless us, Lord, blessing upon blessing, Lord, making us a blessing, a blessing for the world. And blessed are peacemakers, called the sons of God, blessed are those oppressed for righteousness. For there shall be, shall always be, yes, there shall be.
So some children were playing outside in the school playground and they're having a lot of fun, but in the midst of all their uh, teasing, and you know what that can be like, sometimes children don't know quite when to stop, um, they suddenly started to push one another and be just a little bit unkind. And there was one girl in the class who was adopted and they started to pick on her in particular. You don't know your real parents, one said to the other. You're just adopted. Then another chimed in, you don't have real parents. And the girl began to walk away. And just when you thought she might burst into tears, she turned around and said, oh yeah? Well, I feel bad for you because when you were born, your parents felt like they had to keep you. My mum and dad actually want me. They chose me to be in their family. And that shuts the other children up. Now, children can be unkind, and that's unfortunate. And in that story, of course, there'll be lots of hurt going on on all sides. But today, the 1st of November, it's a day in the calendar we know as All Saints Day. And we heard a Bible reading earlier, which said, See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God not just people of God or followers of God or servants of God those things are all true by the way but it's far more intimate than that see what love what kind of love the father has given to us that we should be called children of God and that is what we are today we celebrate the beautiful reality that we are children of God brought into God's family through adoption through no doing of our own, we are children of God. And like that little girl in the story, each one of us can say, because of our adoption, God wants me in his family, and I know it. He's chosen me to be in his family forever. God the Father wanted you so much in his family. He wants me so much in his family that he sent his only son, Jesus, to make it happen. Because like little orphan Annie caught in the clutches of Miss Hannigan, we were caught in the clutches of sin and death and the dev devil, unable to free ourselves. But God the Son made our adoption into his family possible. Jesus took on our human flesh. He joined and experienced our life. He became like us. He died in our place. He died on the cross and he rose again. Jesus paid the price for our adoption. In our baptism, that adoption is signified as being complete. It's a symbol of the fact that we are brought into God's family. We leave behind the old orphan in us, and God now looks on us and sees the perfect life and work of his son Jesus. He calls us by name into his family. He calls you today a saint. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we, of all people, should be called children of God. And that is what we are. Now, God the Holy Spirit works in us to keep us in this family, to keep us through the words proclaimed to us, stirring up our hearts to believe and to trust in him, even in the most difficult of times. The Holy Spirit keeps us in the family by grace bringing us forgiveness and equipping us for living holy lives and today we can remember the spirit's work through our fellowship as christians and in the local church and indeed in the worldwide church now obviously in these times of uh, coronavirus the, the pandemic what some people are calling corona tide um, we are kept apart so much but we rejoice with those who rejoice we mourn with those who mourn even though we are separated by distance as we display the love of Christ uh, towards one another and in the context of fellowship however we're able to stay connected with God's people we remember and remind one another that we are the children of God now, I don't know about you, but I've been to a fair few family reunions over the years, and some of them are good, bad, and some of them are downright ugly as well. 
But at these times, we're not able to get together as much as we'd like, are we? The opportunities to participate in a smorgasbord of food with those recipes, those family favourites that people bring along their dishes. They won't tell you what's in it, mind you. The, the old traditions, the party games, the songs that have been in the family for years, the things that we do whenever we're families together, and they're unique to each and every family. And those things can go on and on and on, and particularly over Christmas time when there's lots in the past gathering together. We don't as yet know what we're going to be able to do this year. But when there's those opportunities to gather together, sometimes um, we meet with people we haven't seen or heard from for years. There's some people who you get together with who you may reluctantly call family. There are some relatives you've never ever met before. Some you've heard stories about. Some others you get far too many updates about on Facebook or through your great aunt Ethel. But there's a bond that unites you. It is that bond that you are, no matter what the distance may have been in the past, when you get together, you're part of the same family. And you know, sometimes in those family reunions, you hear the same stories, you go through the same traditions, and you know, you hear relatives, um, older relatives, perhaps giggling about the pranks that they used to get up to when they were young. And they tell you about it every time you get together. They pretend it's the first time that you've heard it, but you have to carry on uh, listening. Perhaps some of us get into that camp more and more as the years go by. We all do it, don't we? We tell those familiar stories, not just um, the pranks, but those times when we remember uh, the good and the significant and the painful. But we do so, as it were, to remind us of the things that hold us together, to pass on to the next generation, to identify who we are and to take pride in who we are. Well, you know, when you think of family reunions, that's sort of what it's like to be a child of our Heavenly Father, to be a member of the family of God, to be part of the communion of saints. It's one big family. And so today we have this opportunity to remind ourselves that we're part of a big family all around the world, people from the past and people we've never met before. Now, normally at Mount Pleasant, we have a special service on the 1st of November to remember those who've died in recent days or years and to give thanks to God for them, to comfort one another and to encourage one another and to hold those people in our hearts and in our minds, to hear about where we came from and also to understand a little bit more about those people who are really important to us. Some people we've never heard of, some people we've never met, but you know what? The great thing every year as I come away from that service is I give thanks to God for those people who've had such an influence on the lives of others. Now, we're not able to do it this year, but at the end of this sermon, I'm going to give us an opportunity just to be quiet and still and to remember in our hearts people for whom we give thanks today. Because so many of them give us an example of faith as an example to bless us and to encourage us. Now, it's not just about a, some kind of funereal drab event. We're not just uh, remembering this um, just uh, to depress ourselves, because it's also for you. It's also for those of us who are alive today in Christ, because we have the opportunity to look ahead to the joys of eternity. Today is our day, because the reunion of saints happens every time that Christians meet together, every time we connect, every time we gather around God's word, every time we gather around the Lord's table, not just with those present physically, but those who may be far away from us connected, and those in the past who've died and those we've never met before, and those we'll never meet. We are part of the body of Christ. Each one of us is a part of it. When we hear names, when we remember people who are no longer with us, we mourn because we're human. But we should also give thanks to God. We should remind ourselves that one day we will be with our brothers and sisters who've already died and we'll be with them for all eternity. 
we might wish, and we say this sometimes, don't we, at the moment because of Corona uh, time, oh, we'd just like to go back to the way things are. Well, we could never quite go back to the way things are. And if there are some things we might want to leave behind. But God has got something better planned for us. So whilst we look back, we also look ahead, planning for the final family reunion of Christ. Because my brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus is coming again and we need to be ready to meet him. Beloved, we are God's children, John says, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But John's also got a glimpse of our final family reunion in Revelation. All God's children, all God's saints are going to be there. Better than matching T-shirts, we'll, ma we'll don matching white robes, washed, as the picture puts it in Revelation, in the blood of the Lamb. And we'll sing old yet familiar songs about who God is and how he's saved us. And we'll give him glory. We'll sing songs to praise the one who cared so much for his creation that he sent the good shepherd of the sheep to die for us, to lay down his life and to call us his children. For that is what we are. You know, my friends, Jesus is coming again. There's going to be a final family reunion. I want to ask you, are you ready to meet him today? Are you ready? Are you prepared to spend eternity with Christ? Do you know him as your Lord and your Saviour? He invites us to come to him, particularly if today we, because of situations, because of memories of grief or sorrow, loved ones who've died, some only perhaps recently. Maybe we're feeling um, down, but you know what? Jesus invites us to come to him and find rest. He calls us to love our enemies, even in the great playground of life. Not to be bitter, not to be sad, but to live as those who've been baptised, who know that they're called into God's family, bearing the family resemblance by the work of the Holy Spirit, Spirit making us more like Jesus in our words and our actions. John says, see what love the Father's given to us, that we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. So, come, Lord Jesus. I want you now to just bow your heads with me. And there'll be particular people who will be on your heart today, people who you know who have died recently, those who are suffering, those who you mourn, who've died many years ago, but their influence leaves a hole in your life. And you just want to remember them quietly now and give thanks to God. Well, now's an opportunity to do so quietly. So we thank God for their place in our lives. And we pray that we, together with them, will one day be united in the family of God for all eternity in the Lord's presence. Let's bow our heads, shall we, and pray. Father of all, we thank you for those who've blessed us by their example and encouraged us by what they've shown us of you. We give thanks to you for those who we've known but yet have since died. And we pray, Lord, that one day we will meet them again in the glory of your presence. We pray that today you'll comfort those who mourn, that you'll be with those who are sad, but Lord, that you will give us a glorious hope and a confident faith that you are the resurrection and the life. And if we believe in you, even though we die, we will know eternal life. So bless us, Lord, we pray, as we offer you our praise for being called into your family as children of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
So let's close our time together this morning with prayer. Eternal light, shine in our hearts. Eternal goodness, deliver us from evil. Eternal power, be our support. Eternal wisdom, scatter our darkness. Eternal pity, have mercy upon us. That with all our heart and mind and soul and strength, we may seek your face and be brought by your mercy to your holy presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Oh